Well, Erin, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I do appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you are running two extraordinary businesses and you've been doing it quite a, quite a long time. So I wanna hear just back to the beginning, take us back, what was the motivation for getting started in business? Oh goodness. So way back, <laughs> let's see here. I've always been a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit, uh, though I never really identified it that way until quite a bit later in life. Went to school, didn't really have a, um, a path, so to speak, that I saw, especially in business. So I went there, kind of wasted my time a little bit, rode horses, took an equestrian course, that kind of stuff. Uh, but then when I got married, and I got married very young at the age of 19, had my first kid at the age of 20, had six kids by the age of 28, and uh, started a business making hair accessories for my daughter when my husband finished grad school. Okay. And I was, this is in like 2008, right? So mid-recession, uh, we're in our first little home in Arizona. Our The price of our home we had paid for it was two thirds of what it, or, or sorry, three times the amount of what it was now worth. Mm -hmm. My husband gets a job coming out of grad school moves him to Michigan. And in the evenings, I was left alone. The kids are in bed. I had a two, three, no, sorry, a two, one, and a newborn at the time. Wow. So, so in the evenings, I just got really antsy, overactive imagination, need to keep my hands busy, that kind of thing. And uh, started making these little hair flower accessories. And quickly, I mean, I don't tend to do anything small. And so I uh, quickly turned it into a business. Within five days, I had a website up, baileysblossoms.com, uh, threw some things up on Etsy, and it was just a, a great opportunity and experience to grow into something different and keep me occupied at the time. Wow. So, so you started <laughs> out with a, a website, and obviously mm -hmm. the name Bailey's Blossoms, I assume, is the flowers in the hair. That was well, that's, yeah, from. that's what it was at the time. So it was Bailey based off of my first daughter mm -hmm. it was Bailey and then blossoms based <sighs> off of these, based off of these hair flowers. And, but ultimately I'm making all these things. I'm literally going to Hobby Lobby purchasing flower heads to come home, rip them apart and glue them back together again and adhere hear them to clips. So that's really what I was doing, burning the tar out of my fingers and then selling them for like three to $5. And I'm thinking, how many of these am I going to have to make in order for it to be worth my time? Yeah. And so I'm a math and a spreadsheet girl. And I was also running a preschool out of our garage at the time, because that's what put my husband through school in the first place. Wow. And I needed to try to sell our home in the middle of a recession, try to finish up the school year before joining him in Michigan. So we were there for about six months, um, on our own. And, uh, <laughs> so now I'm, I'm doing this, the math and I'm thinking, man, I make better money teaching preschool than I do making these stupid things. And PS it hurts. Like I've got the burns to prove it. So I started thinking, what can I do to increase the average order value? My dollar per hour proposition. Of course I didn't have those fancy terms at the time, but I knew that I needed to make more money per hour. Sure, sure. <laughs> and so I thought, what else can I do to complement these to make people purchase more so that maybe they're spending $30 with me instead of 10. And I don't sew. I have no fashion background, nothing like that at all. And so I uh, started doing DIY tutus, no sew tutus. And I would just tie these things in knots and I just made these really, I have a, I have a very clear vision of what I want to create, even though I may not always possess all the skills. So okay. I'm YouTubing <laughs> it up and Googling it sure, up sure. and right and figuring it out and launch these tutus. Well, people loved them. I marketed them as like first birthday sets and everything else. And it was a huge hit on Etsy. But uh, after a while, I realized the, I'm making all of these people very happy, but they can never come back because their child celebrated their first birthday. They're not right. going to have another one unless right. they have another kid. I'm never seeing anybody again. Right. So that's when the, another little aha moment went off and I thought, okay, well, how do I get them to come back? All these people who already trust my quality, who already have put out these great reviews. And when somebody came to me and said, Hey, my daughter's going to have an Alice in Wonderland themed birthday. Can you create an Alice in Wonderland themed tutu? And I thought, Oh, that's genius. And so then I prepped for Halloween and I thought, oh, let's turn them into witches and ghosts and pirates. And I mean, you name it, I could create a tutu costume for it. So I just yeah. gathered up all the accessories and made it adorable and rocked the heck out of Halloween. I mean, just killed it. 
And I'm looking now and I'm thinking, you know, fast forward, now we're moving to Michigan. I shut down my preschool. Um, I'm just doing Bailey's Blossoms predominantly on Etsy. We have our fourth child. Her name's Peyton. Yeah, I mean, all of these things are happening. And I just remember thinking, okay, September, October, August even are all killer months, but then it's the dry spell in comparison the rest of the year. Mm. How do I get Halloween all year round? So I'm constantly like, how do I do this? How do I do this? So anyways, the second Halloween comes up, it completely flattened me out. I did not manage my time or balance anything well at all. Uh, Completely buried me. My house fell apart. I fell apart. I my husband doing all this at night oh, once the kids go to bed or something. At night, nap time, early in the mornings, anytime I can squeeze it in. I mean, truly, if you were to ask my neighbors at the time, they they would tell you the only, they would see me every day the sun was shining. I'd be sitting on on a blanket on the driveway while all of my kids are riding bikes in a circle around the cul-de-sac, and I'm making tutus every wow. day, every day. <laughs> so. My husband gets this job offer to take him, to take us to Sao Paulo, Brazil. And he calls me and he goes, honey, I'm so sorry. You know, you won't be able to work. You, our spouses don't get work visas. I think you're going to have to shut it down. And I'm like, hallelujah, I will do that. Yeah. And I did. And he's like, okay. And I said, I need a break. I need to breathe. This is fantastic. But I need to step back and consider if this is what I really want. Yeah. And no, so let me ask you this. Yeah. It sounds like your husband's a bit successful in whatever yes. you're doing. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds like you don't have to do these things. In no. Order to make the extra money. Correct. I mean, in the beginning we did because I mean, my, my husband, we were in over a hundred thousand dollars of debt in one year yeah. based off of his schooling. It took a couple of years. I mean, he got a job with Mercedes Benz financial services. He progressed very quickly in the company and it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, and, and really for me, I always just needed something to, to film me. Business business has always been a part of who I was. Creating things, creation has always been a part of who I am, whether that's creation in motherhood with my kids or creation in business and and just finding opportunities to yeah. solve problems. I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So you're headed to Brazil now. Yes. So I shut it down. I tell everybody on social media, we had about 25,000 followers on Facebook at the time. And, and this was in 2011. And I just said, Hey guys, you know, thank you so much for your support. Bailey's Blossoms is going to go on a break for the next two to three years. Um, we're going to be abroad, but don't worry when we come back, it's going to be bigger and better than ever before. And of course I'm thinking, I have no idea what it's going to look like when we come back, <laughs> but I knew I had a couple of years to figure it out. So I was very excited to turn on, to turn the page and just take a breather for a bit. We go to Brazil, we tackle that. I'm rubbing shoulders with some phenomenal entrepreneurs and just had two years to dream, just a dream. And so my husband, uh, we move back when it's time after two years is up, we move now to Texas. So Michigan, Brazil, Texas. And, uh, we come to Texas and I said, you know, we had, we had, gotten out of debt while we were in Brazil. We were very frugal in the way that we saved our money and and allocated those funds. And then we were able to save up so we could purchase a home again. And this was our second home in Texas and our second opportunity to purchase a home. Our first one, obviously in 2008, didn't go over so very well. So we were (laughs) very excited to have that again. And I said, okay, we we put our down payment on this home. We had this little nest egg left over of $35,000. And I said, I want to launch Bailey's Blossoms again. And he said, okay, well, how much is it going to take? And I said, all of it. <laughs> and he said, you're kidding. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really serious. Like, I really think that this is going to be great. And he said, but what about balance? What about what happened last time? I said, here's the thing. I'm not going to make stuff anymore. I'm going to design it and I'm going to outsource the production or, and, and kind of provide like, and I'm also, well, at that point, I guess I was outsourcing the production of the materials, but I was going to provide the kits. Okay. And I said, so I will, I'll sell the rolls of tool, the elastic, the ribbon, the flowers, the clips, all the things and put them in this DIY kit, create a tutu tutorial on YouTube and teach people how to do it themselves. Sure. Right. And so that's what we did. And he allowed me to deplete our savings account. Bless his heart. He's incredible. (laughs) And I told him, I said, give me one year and I'll put the money back where it belongs. And within three months I was able to do it. Wow. So it was a, it was quite the opportunity, but 
ever changing because then I have all of these people coming back. My, my ability to put out orders has like quadrupled because now I'm not making things anymore and I'm seeing the potential and I'm going, okay, what's next? And this woman sends me a, a message and she goes, ma'am, will you please, will you please, please, I love your designs. Will you please just make it for me? I don't want to make it myself. Mm. And I said, well, it's really easy. She said, I don't really care how easy it is. I'm not interested in DIY. I just don't plain want to learn how to do this. Just give me the tutu. Just give it to me. She's like, I don't care how much it costs. And I thought, oh, if I open up this can of worms, I'm not going to be able to close it again. And so I thought, I don't want to go back to what that looked like before. Right. I mean, we, I didn't even mention, we went to Brazil with four kids, we came back with five. And at this point, I think I'm pregnant with number six. So, I mean, it's just ever changing, right? And so <laughs> I said, you know what? Let me go back to the drawing table and let me think of what I can come up with. And at that point we drafted up or I drafted up our first romper. And I put a romper, which is pre-made, together with a chunky jewelry set, together with a hair accessory. And I said, what do you think of this? And she said, I'm in love. That's what I want. And everybody loved them. And that's when I finally realized, huh, what about clothing? And I very slowly started getting my feet wet into designing clothing. And now Bailey's Blossoms is a clothing line. So Amazing. there it is. When did, when did you first sell that, that first romper um, online? Not oh, just, you know, goodness. Right? And how long has that taken you to get to this point? Right. So original launch 2008, closed down in 2011, relaunch in 2013. This would have been roughly 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Probably late 2014, early 2015, if I had to guess, but I'm gonna have to go back and like for really sure, research sure. to make sure I'm right. Right. So it's, years, yeah. yes. And, and how and, many SKUs? Um, per obviously you oh, have goodness. different lines that come out and you know, Bailey's know blossoms but. alone has, oh, gall 7,000 SKUs, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's grown very quickly. Yeah. And why, wh what would you attribute to that quick growth over the last six years? Oh my. Okay. So a little learning. And so in 2015, the end of the year, we've got six children. And I went to my husband and I said, here's the thing. We're starting to cross over into that uncharted water territory again, where I'm wondering if I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> and we had converted one of, the, one of the garages at our home to be an office space. I had moms bringing their kids to my house to come work six days out of the week to double shifts. I mean, it was just crazy. Wow. And and I had no opportunity to escape it. And I was starting to realize that while I loved business, I did not love leading and managing people. I didn't have the tools in my toolbox yet. Mm. And so I would get silently frustrated with things that were going on, but never actually vocalize. And then I just fix it quietly behind the scenes. So it was very poisonous, right? I mean, I look back and laugh and go back and want to smack myself around. But at the time, I, I didn't know any better. So I went to him and he manages all these people in his career. And I said, here's the thing. I either need to shut this down, which something's telling me that would just be stupid, or I think you might need to consider quitting your job and doing this with me because I don't think I can keep doing it alone at this uh, point. Yeah, yeah. And in 2015, we were one of the fastest, um, or one of the largest uh, and fastest growing children's brands on Etsy. And we did about $600,000 in sales on Etsy that year alone. And I didn't think life could get any better. So he goes, you know what? $600,000 in a year in sales shows some really great growth potential. So you know what? Yeah, 2016, why don't we budget as if your income is the only income that exists and let's see if we can do this whole entrepreneur thing, right? Because even at that point, it's funny, I didn't even really consider myself one. I'm like, yeah, let's see if we can be entrepreneurs. Like I hadn't been one for the past however many years, right? So, <laughs> so anyways, literally two weeks later after we had made that decision and Etsy made some changes to the platform, we got yanked from the platform. We were gone off of it overnight. So I wake up and I'm just going, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm conversing back and forth with them. There's no going back. I'm devastated. 85% of our sales are on their platform. And in my mind, Bailey's Blossoms is done for. We're over. So I walk out to the office to go and tell um, my then office manager, our customer service manager, that we're no longer on the platform. She's eight, eight and a half months pregnant. And I tell her and she goes, Aaron, are you telling me that after I have this baby, I'm no longer going to have a job? And I said, 
oh my gosh. You know, I mean, in that moment, I'm thinking, that was what I was planning on telling you, but now I don't know that I can. And nothing short of divine intervention. I just, I didn't know what to say, but I opened my mouth and I just said, no, I'm telling you that if you will be flexible with me, your job description just might change. Hmm. And she said, what does that mean? And again, I just started talking and I said, you know what? Start sending a message to every person who's ever purchased with us on Etsy because they don't give you an email list. You don't own your customer base. And just email or send them a message through Etsy and say, hey, thank you so much for your support. We just wanted to give you a heads up. The Bailey's Blossoms can now exclusively be found at baileysblossoms.com. That's it. Nothing else. And so we copied and pasted all day for two days. And they're thinking, you're out of your mind. But by the end of the second day, our sales had almost quadrupled. And and I'm going, why? What happened? Is this just last touch? I mean, what is this? And so I started digging in. I go to social media, see that we have an influx of people tagging us in photos. And I'm clicking on their profiles and I'm digging into who they are. And I'm thinking, this is really cool, but what the heck? And I start realizing these same people who are now tagging us have always had their kids wearing our things, but previous to that change had been tagging Etsy instead of Bailey's Blossoms. Suddenly we had claimed our brand name. And in doing that, then I became unapologetic about it. I, I changed our poly mags. I changed our mailers. I changed, I mean, hang tags, you name it. We, we put our brand on everything and it just took off and we grew 233% that year. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Is your um, husband work with you full time or does he, he sure does. He does. He made the transition. Yeah. And what role does he play in the business? He's a CFO. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very he does all the fun stuff like taxes and yeah, sounds, sounds <laughs> HR. Yeah. Oh yeah. He loves it. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Um, so in the midst of all of this, I mean, man, so many learnings. How, how did you figure out how to have, you know, mother, six kids and also create this business? I mean, that just seems overwhelming right you know, in the process did you have outside help and support do they go into school do they have nannies do you well have- now yeah. so ironically um in the beginning of our marriage i was a nanny for multiple families and so i always knew because um i had had that opportunity to be that that i knew for me that wasn't going to be the answer i need i wanted to be with my kids and so i created something and i always had created things to where i could work with my kids in tandem or in with my kids in tow mm-hmm. that got drastically complicated the bigger we got as we moved out of the garage and into a 6000 square foot warehouse and then from our 6000 square foot warehouse now into a 25000 square foot space i mean it's it's constantly gotten and uh, more complex, mm-hmm. but I've always, I've always been able to work around their schedules. I've always had the flexibility to be able to make that in each, in each instance of our life work. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I haven't completely fallen apart multiple times and cried and wondered what in the world were you thinking doing this? Mm-hmm. But then I have to look back and I have to say, okay, how many days do I think this was stupid, Aaron? Versus how many days do I think, Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and for the fact that not only do I get to be home with my kids, but my husband gets to be home. Mm-hmm. And we've got four boys. They, they need their father's influence in their life. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just see blessings. Even through the hardship, I just see blessings. We've been really blessed to be surrounded by, by great people. But it has been a journey of me giving myself grace and understanding what balance actually is and what it's not. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions that I had, especially in the very beginning, was that balance meant if you're going to work five hours, Aaron, then you also need to spend five hours with your kids. Well, I realized very quickly that that's not balance because I could be with my kids for five hours, distracted on my phone, answering emails or texting people or doing whatever, scrolling on Facebook and feel like I've accomplished nothing of value with them versus when I'm working, if I can focus solely on work and I can get in it deep and then get out of it. And then when I'm with my kids, if I can be fully present with my kids and then fully present with my religious obligations and fully um, present with my spouse, that's when I feel balanced. It's uh, the ability to be present, to turn everything else off. And even if it's only for 20 minutes, my kids will value that 20 minutes of uninterrupted present time more than they would if I spent all day with them completely distracted. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've heard you kind of refer to faith at some point <clears throat> along the way in our conversation a couple of times. How did that, um, how does that uh, either help you, motivate you, integrate into what you're doing with business and family? Like, how does that play out for you? Oh, it's everything for me. Um, I am a very religious person and I, uh, for me, it keeps me grounded in knowing what I'm really trying to accomplish. I know that no matter what accolades and things that I can achieve or possess in this life is not going to merit me anything once this life is over. It's not going to matter. And so one of my favorite quotes is, no success in life can compensate for failure in the home. Hmm. And I love that. It keeps me grounded in realizing why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to teach my kids that they can dream big. Hmm. I'm doing this because I want to teach my kids what hard work looks like. I'm doing this because I want to teach them the value of an education and what that does to eliminate poverty. And then when they're blessed with financial means, I want to do this because I want to teach them what their responsibility is to pour into the world when they receive those blessings. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just looking at all of those pieces, all of those, all those pieces to the puzzle and determine what impact can I make? What influence can I have? and what, what changes can I instill on the world? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, some of this, uh, you know, it's just out of, these questions are out of curiosity, just so you know. Yeah. Um, the, I noticed that a lot of the style that you uh, present in both uh, Bailey's Blossoms and Peyton Brie is um, pretty conservative in terms mm -hmm. of the actual, um, not only the patterns, but the uh, meaning the um, the design of the uh, whether it's the yes. flowers or something of that nature, as well as the cut. Um, and so I'm wondering how much of your uh, customer base is Mormon versus you know X Y Z. And I doubt when you're taking the order, you're not having are you Mormon? But <laughs> <laughs> obviously that's not that's the case. A, that's a but funny you know, question. Yeah, like no, I'm, it's true. I'm just curious how much of that is catering to that clientele and yeah. not only helping that clientele, but also helping your business. Absolutely. So Peyton Bree definitely has the more conservative, um, uh, the currently more conservative um, persona. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, and that was based off of my personal, just, you know, I'm, I'm watching my girls growing up and I'm going, stop, you know? Oh, no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and I'm going, that looks really cute on you. Too cute. Actually, yeah. you know, How I mean, I've got a, can those shorts be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you 14? And why do you not look 14? <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, there's, for me, there's a lot of things at play as far as, you know, um, overprotective mom, but we've also had customers who've grown out of Bailey's, which was less so because I'm like, I can, you know, half naked babies are perfect, right? You know, half naked tweens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I've also had a lot of people that have grown through Bailey's and into Peyton's going, wait a second, we want some of the same stuff. Why so conservative over here? So we've actually uh -huh. been kind of called out a little bit and I'm going, okay. okay. So there, so I, we are finding that that balance right now, so to speak, as far as it can't be one person's preference. This is a brand, Bailey's Blossoms is a brand that has been made up from the customers. I mean, if you go to the website, baileysblossoms.com, 85% of the images on there are customers. They're not, we didn't hire models. We didn't take the pictures. It's our customers are a part of our brand. Yeah. And we want to allow Peyton Brie to be the same. And so now we're, we're finally old enough because Peyton Brie is still a very brand, a new brand. Right. And we're finally old enough to be getting that feedback back and to go, okay, well now in the second round of designing, we're going to do it with more sets of eyes than just one. And what okay. does that look like? So to your, to your point, do we have a reputation right now for being conservative? Yes. Um, but am I listening and looking for opportunities to listen to the customer base that we have and not trying to target just one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a finding the balance there. Gotcha. So racy Mormons are stepping up <laughs> saying we want less conservative clothing. 
Oh is, that my what God. I, is that what I hear you saying? Is that what I hear you saying? <laughs> we have to put out a customer poll and see how people <laughs> respond to this. Oh my word, that's fantastic. <laughs> we want some tube tops for our <laughs> Mormon daughters. No, we do not. Okay. Um, so I know, um, well, what motivated you to start Peyton Bree? I think you started it in 2018, I think it was, right we around there. We started it a year and a half, almost two years ago, but not quite, about a year and a half ago. And it actually was launched, this is a, a tender story, um, it was launched as a social selling company, so direct sales. Mm -hmm. And we had one of the most successful launches in the history of direct sales posed to be a really great success story. And the whole concept of me dreaming this up was my daughter was 11, 12 years old. My other daughter, you know, oh goodness, eight at the time. And I was thinking, okay, they're no longer the Bailey's Blossoms age anymore. They're not toddlers anymore. They're becoming young women. What does that look like? How do I continue connecting with them? Because in during this awkward stage where a lot of times mo mothers and daughters are button heads, mm -hmm. I didn't want that. And so we created this, this opportunity for mothers to be able to provide for their families, to be able to host in home shows and all these things coinciding with their daughters to be able to, with this concept of mothers and daughters growing together. Together, learning through mom's example, all these things. Well, I mean, very, very near and dear to my heart, outfits. even now, and potentially matching outfits, right? So, but what happened was based off of inventory projections that were completely wrong, um, I way over purchased, mm. way over purchased. I projected their ability to sell based off of my experience, not based off of the fact that they would have none. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was every time that we purchased or we hit the minimum order quantity for a new design, those that we had that were selling the product could only had the, the ability or the, the purchasing power to purchase 11% of it. So every time we launched a new design, break even point didn't ha cap until 50%. I lost $2 million in six months. Mm -hmm. It was catastrophic. Are you still and it selling was, those designs? Like, are you um, still, you still have that some in the of them, uh, Some of them, <laughs> but I'm like, whew, we're going to celebrate so big. I mean, the, here's the, here's the killer thing. I, after we siphoned as much as we could and we realized, you know, put together some projections and saw what it would look like if we allowed it to continue on, we realized we were going to bury ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I made the very, very hard announcement went on a, a live, sobbed my eyes out and just said, hey guys, here's what happened. We are gonna change the business model to what I know best, which is traditional retail wholesale model. Mm -hmm. You can still sell the product as a wholesaler, but we're gonna sell the product too. We have to be able to get rid of the rest of this inventory or we will not last. Mm -hmm. And so, and then within eight months of making that change, um, in eight months, we were able to, to cross over into the seven figure sales mark. So, and it saved us, I mean, it saved us. So now, yes, we have two, uh, uh, you can call them multi-million dollar brands, whatever. But the nice thing is, is I was able to prove what we did that worked for Bailey's over on Peyton so that then I could take it to struggling brands, which is now what I also do is, is um, executive coaching and training on social media and e-commerce mm -hmm. and show them, hey, you may be struggling, so were we, here's what we did, here's the solution, here's this, um, this plan in action, let's create this out and fix this together. So it's really been... It, I struggle to say a blessing in disguise because I know for some people it really hurt them and that really devastates me. But in, when I really step back and I realize how many people are being blessed from it now, I, can't, I cannot not be grateful for the lessons that I learned, mm -hmm. no matter how hard they were. <laughs> yeah, so challenging. Yes. Talk for a minute about your relationship with your husband in the context of now he's working with you. Yes. I assume you're in the same office. You're working yep. together. Um, he uh, now, and this is a fascinating dynamic. Does he report to you? <laughs> That's a great question. We get it a lot. So, on paper, if you were to look at the hierarchical structure of how businesses work, 
you could say that. Ultimately, if someone's got to pull a trump card and make a decision and, uh, and we're not in agreement, if it falls under my jurisdiction of overall company vision, where we're headed, design, social media, all of those things, then ultimately if I have to play a veto card, I don't play it in a dirty way. We're going to talk it through until he's like, I don't really understand this, but I trust you go for it. On the flip side, if he's going taxes, this HR, that structural foundation, blah, blah, blah. And I don't agree. Ultimately, he's going to talk my ear off until I say, I don't really understand this, but I trust you. So, okay. Sure, so sure. we're definitely a side-by-side partnership partnership regardless of our of our titles um but we do have an interesting dynamic because we are so completely different when we built this this office that we're in now we actually built a very large office for us to share and um in it we put you know a couch in the corner with the television for the kids if they were and some toys and stuff so that they could come and hang out with us if we ever needed to bring them after school hours that kind of thing um but as we were building out the whole office And I went to him kind of sheepishly and I said, honey, I love you so much, but I don't want to share an office with you. And he was so sad. And he's like, seriously, you don't? Why? And I said, well, because, you know, and at home we shared an office. I said, consider what it feels like. Um, I said, when you're doing taxes and I said, I'm both creative and analytical. So, but, but I cannot do both at the same time. It's one or the other. If you're doing taxes and I'm in my creative zone and I'm, you know, working on a podcast or I'm writing a book or I'm designing clothing or whatever it is I'm happening to do. And you turn around and you say, Hey, such and such HES code, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? I'm sorry, what? And he'd have to ask me like five or six times and it would be this hard shift over. And I finally said, holy smokes, we are sabotaging one another's time because we're taking so much advantage of the fact that we're conveniently right there. Mm -hmm. And I did it to him too. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, if they needed to talk about taxes or HR or design or whatever it happened to be, would book an appointment. You'd block out some time on your calendar to sit down for 30 minutes or an hour, but we weren't doing that to each other. We were constantly interrupting one another, not in, not to be mean, but just because it was convenient. Yeah. So I just said, I would love to have my own space and I think that you deserve your own space. And so that's what we ended up doing and it's the greatest thing ever. So I can yell to him on the other side of the wall. He can still hear me, (laughs) but it works well for us. We just had to figure out what are those healthy parameters to, to keep us in love with one another. Yeah, of course. And (laughs) you go home, um, how much of that conversation does, you know, it as well or- It's so natural to bring it all home. And we've noticed, and there have been multiple times, I mean, it's not a flawless execution. You're constantly learning from your mistakes and trying to improve upon them. So, I mean, we have a, we love to be in the hot tub when the kids are sleeping, especially when it's cold outside, right? And I remember one time we, we were in the hot tub for like an hour and a half. And at the end of it, I was so stressed and I thought, why am I so stressed? This is the most relaxing place in the world. And then I realized for the whole hour and a half, we were talking about work. And I said, this is not okay. Like we need to put it away. How do we do that? So we've had to, there are times where both of us have to call each other out and say, we need to put this away. And what does that look like? So it's just constantly being aware and having enough communication and enough trust to be able to say even the hard things, knowing that it's for in one another's best interest. Mm -hmm. You have two girls. Yes. Do they get to wear anything else other than your <laughs> brand? Are you clothing? kidding me? Peyton, which the second, <laughs> the second business Peyton Bree's named after her. She hates everything I make. Every <laughs> single thing. How old is she right now? She turns 10 tomorrow. Okay. She's a turd and I love her to death, but she is, she is about as tomboyish as tomboyish can come. So we're, we're even thinking, what does a little line of athleisure wear within Peyton Brie look like just to appease her? Because at one point I said, honey, we're doing, we were doing an Inc. 5000 photo shoot. And I said, you can't not wear Peyton Brie for this. And she's like, Ugh, it has flowers on it. And I said, here, have this one. It's solid green. I'm like, it's practically like your brothers could practically wear it. And she's like, there's a bow. I mean, she's so mad. Wow. So, oh, she's so funny. And I said, well, what would you like to wear? She goes, if you make something black with a skull on it, I'll wear it. And I'm like, okay, I'll see what I can. Oh my gosh. I don't even know whose child you are. That is amazing. <laughs> that is so funny. 
she's wow. fun. She's so much fun. That's yeah. great. All right. So we've but got Bailey a, on the other hand, wine coming out. Uh, right. I'm like, oh my gosh, right, all, all the things we're crossing all kinds of boundaries. <laughs> got the racy line. We've got the goth wine. There you go. Oh my word. <laughs> wow. And so, um, what about Bailey? Cause she's older. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Bailey's 14 and mm -hmm. she's into all the things. She loves to come and help me design. She loves to help pick, pick apart the samples and Very fun. yeah, she loves it. And how about so. the boys? How do they, uh, you know, how are they participating or not, or see the, this whole business? Yeah. What are their thoughts on it? The, the nice thing about family owned businesses is traditional laws, as far as working don't apply. So we have our fulfillment center, which is attached to our, our office space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, even yesterday, both, both of my sons and Peyton were both here, um, helping to pull some orders and pack some orders. And so, I mean, we, we want them to learn work ethic. We want them to appreciate the team and the effort and understanding that this, the blessings that you see and that you get to participate right. in right. do not come by sitting idly by. And right. if you want to participate in them, yeah. then you need to work too. But we're not, I mean, my kids will make comments. Oh, someday when I'm 16, I get X car. And I'm like, well, you better start saving your penny because mom and dad are not that cool. Wow. <laughs> we're not giving you handouts. Yeah, You're going to yeah. work for it. Yeah. So, yeah. So good. Okay. And um, you are uh, hosting a podcast mm -hmm. um, called Conquering Chaos. Yes. Now, why did you choose that name? Oh, because of my life. I'm like six kids, two businesses. We're, I mean, we're all kinds of chaos. And I say conquering almost in jest because it's a day to day. Sometimes conquering just means laughing. Sometimes conquering means the fact that my house didn't burn down today. I mean, it's just, it's a great sense of humor. It's the ability to roll with the punches and stand upright after you fall for the thousandth time. Hmm. Wow. All right, so people can check you out uh, and your personal work at AaronEHooley.com, which is yes. crazy. You, uh, obviously, they can Google Aaron Hooley, but there's what's what there's another Aaron Hooley, prominent photographer, right? What when I heck? saw, right, I'm like, don't go to AaronHooley.com unless you want to see a photographer. I mean, she's cool too. I need to meet her someday. But I'm like, dang, I don't ever go by Aaron E. Hooley, but now I have to. <laughs> that is so funny. And uh, yeah. obviously, we'll link to Bailey'sBlossoms.com and PeytonBree.com. How often do people say Peyton Bray? All the time. All yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Do you correct them or you just let it slide? Eh, depends. I'm like, it, it depends on what context, right? <laughs> but no, it's, it's Peyton Bree. Her middle name is after my, one of my best girlfriends growing up, we went through a lot together and, and her nickname was Bree. So. Very cool. Yeah. I know that um, you have something that you want to give away today. It's the daily planner sheet and a time tracker. Yes. How has this been helpful for you and how might it be oh, helpful goodness. for listeners? So going back to what we touched on earlier about your ability to be present in everything that you do, um, my idea of a successful day starts out with being incredibly intentional, um, being able to get up, so to clear my head before all the chaos ensues, set my intention for the day, understand what I'm working towards, and then block it out and track it. Because ultimately, you can have the best intentions in the world and then completely ignore them. And if you're not tracking it or holding yourself accountable to it, you think that you've only wasted a week of your life, but it may have been six weeks or eight weeks or eight months. And so for me, I like um, both of these printables help me to have a very clear visual to hold myself accountable to say, okay, how am I doing? Am I allocating my time in the way that feels good to me? Do I need to make any adjustments? What are they? So both of these printables have been very beneficial for me in making sure that I manage my time well. Good, good. Okay, the URL is a little long, so we're going to link to it in yes. the show notes. You can swipe up on your phone now and click on that. It's a daily planner sheet and time tracker, or you can go to our website, uh, insporising.com, and find it there as well. Oh my goodness, Aaron! I am so just uh, in love with what you're doing, and I just thank you. Oh, great work. I mean, it is so 
you know, it, you can look at it from the outside and go, look at her ultra successful. It's <laughs> so much work. It, it is, is a so lot of work. Much work. Yes. And you have just been doing it for a long time, investing in your um, customers and your family. And so I just admire what you're doing. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much.